What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fi with my man, Eric Shee Tabor. Uh, a couple quick things I'm going to address before we get into today's Monster Thursday NBA slate. Uh, I'm not going to complain about Harris English being withdrawing before, but that was just going to throw it out there. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. Harris English is withdrawn? Oh, God, get out of here, Sheets. <laughs> I knew my, my lineups were not doing well for some reason. I couldn't quite figure. Oh, my God. You're right. He's totally withdrew. <laughs> that was a brutal one, um, but... But uh, I did. I did mention it to those of you, many of you, as I understand in chat, um, that we did. We we did get a, a message from DraftKings about showing full lineups. So we're gonna avoid showing full. You know, we'll leave a couple spots empty. Uh, to those of you at DraftKings, if anybody's out there, we are trying to comply as best we can. I have sent multiple messages asking, you know, uh, what what we can exactly do because we didn't get the exact answer. But um, but we have a you know an idea. Of that's that's what the other sites are doing. That's what we're gonna do for now. Uh, don't worry. Don't everybody. Don't worry. It's it's all it's all good. It's all chill. It yeah, we're, we're gonna cool. provide the stuff. I just want to make sure we're cool with them because that you know I can't risk having my account exactly shut down or suspended. But we are. I mean, we do have a, another thing set up where we're gonna have more information for you on our Patreon channel, which I was gonna load yesterday, but I didn't feel like doing it until after they got back from DraftKings. So and I'm also really considering once I tighten it up a little bit. And if, if we actually get a site, may, maybe I'll make my spreadsheet like like available. That, like, she, that's a great idea. I've had I've heard from a ton of people that they love that. Yeah, maybe and I, maybe I could do it in, in like a, a ASP format where you can just look at it as a, as a web page or screw around with. That. I don't know. I, I have to I have to I have to work because I didn't actually. De- well, it's so funny. Like I didn't actually de- develop. I have an Excel guy who kind of works for me or whatever just on this project that this kind of started like one tiny little thing and it's just kind of like grown. So I just want to tighten it up a little bit. So, so you, you know what it's like? It's like my accounting thing I showed you with my poker software mm-hmm. where it's a tiny bit buggy, but like it's buggy that I know how to kind of like tweak, get around. But like, right. if I like gave it to somebody else, they'd be, they wouldn't know how to deal with the issues that come up. But you, you know, know what I would say though, is that that's pretty much true for every system out there. I that's mean, true. The, like you know, take up any of these, any of these great built custom uh, randomizers or whatever. I don't know about the saber system. But not even that. I might even be able to like you know, I might I might fi- just fire this up and just put my yeah. you know, if we get like a site or even the Patreon site, like that's something that definitely like I would have to we'd have to charge for. Yeah. So 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 I would like at six, you know, I I would do what I do. I like, at, at, at noon I put one of these you know total grid up. I do a video on how to read it. And then at six o'clock, we grab MBA or something like that. Beautiful. And what's cool is that also we'll, we'll, we'll get to it, but, but when we get into to MLB, this is like the last MLB slide. Of MLB, I have like a stack uh, doer, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where I rate stacks and things like that also that I that I still haven't, you know, whatever. So so yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll do that. That could be something to do. Absolutely. And 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 for all in all fairness, we do have a site, guys, but we just haven't put all the stuff on it and we don't have someone to manage it. But once we figure this stuff out, I actually have a couple guys. We'll talk offline about this because I got I got some ideas. Okay. Um all right, let's get into it. We got a giant slate. Why don't you pull up your screen and we can talk about game by game? Oh yeah, I was I was I thought that's so funny. I thought I was already doing that when I was flexing the my spreadsheet and stuff like that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um okay, so so as far as um and so this is Jack, you happy? You have an empty lineup here. Okay. Um, so, so we have a we have a pretty big slate, and you know, there's there's a lot of the good news is, I guess, is that there's a lot of news that's I think already been released, or at least is pretty, pretty well, whatever. But remember, it's the NBA, so any anything's possible. Um, and how about uh, how about Sacramento releasing their lineup like? Before other while other lineups were locking last night, they they released their lineup for tonight. <laughs> that was was that what happened? Yeah, Lou Galton like twenty seven hours before the game, he launched he launched his lineup. And, and guys, just so you know, the 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 coaching thing is still in the offing. I have to figure out the best contest to, to make it work. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I just wanted to just make it fun. The golf thing worked perfectly just because of the timing of it all. Like I would do the same thing. Like I almost did it. I said, listen, I have a play that I'm totally playing today in the NBA. If anybody can guess between now and then, whatever, but I, but, but the NBA is so fluid. I can just totally change my mind. You know what I mean? Right. Right. That I could get ruled out. Someone else could get ruled out making a bad play. You know what I mean? So, so that's, that's why we'll, we'll come up with something. Yeah, let's do it. Um, all right. I'm going to, I mean, you know, just, I haven't like, I mean, I've gone through parts of this slate and I, I, I still feel a little confused at where I want to go. And I think these are really good slates. Like I want to, you asked me yesterday a question that I wanted to quickly elaborate on before we get on. I think I have a much bigger edge when things are in most people's minds up 
in flux. And I think at the very beginning of the season, we saw that and it was working really well for me because I was able to project probably a little bit better than other people were because I was very into the off season. I, I was just very dialed into that stuff. I've also, you know, I think that going, what, I, what I mean for this is sort of after the all-star break, you don't want to treat it like it's a new season, but you do want to sort of look at how guys are going to be used. And with this time off, how other people have healed, um, how people are going to tighten up their rotations in the second half. And I think this will be a telling sign. So I want to try and figure out any way we can sort of leverage that in our favor. Um, if that makes any sense to you guys and uh, yeah, go from there. Uh, Cheech, you want to start it off with the first game and uh, I'm not going to have a whole lot to say about it. So maybe, maybe you're going to enlighten me on, any, on something. Well, I'll, I will say this is when, when I was, when I was um, kind of screwing around with building some, some lineups, there was one guy that that kind of just filtered in at, at a price that I needed. Let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of reminded me to just bring him up again. Um, now I don't know if um, if Delon Wright is back yet. Um, he's, he's questionable uh, officially as of this morning. Okay, because if he isn't, um, I'm going to suggest to you the same theoretical that you suggested to me is there any reason why we are not continuing to play Dennis Smith Jr. Um, yeah, he would be without Delon Wright I'm with you 100% sorry I didn't okay. keep going keep going okay. that was the only thing I would say I mean he had one bum game but big deal yeah yeah and it was a back-to-back and you know maybe maybe the New York thing had an opposite effect on him he had whatever it's just basketball a little more timid yeah um but but I but I would I would be willing to go back to him even with even with Jeremy Grant back even with the other guys back I do think that this is a guy you're going to hear me mention uh, a number of times off and on. I actually wonder if Devonte Graham being back helps Gordon Hayward because Lonzo is actually not a ball stopper. Like the way people sort of pictured he was going to be, he's actually been really good at moving the ball around, but they run, they seem to run more with Hayward run more through Hayward. I should say um, Hayward and Graham when, when they're both on the court. So I'm just sort of interested to see, and I haven't done all my research on, on how they've done off and on. Uh, so I don't have all that right in front of me, but I think Gordon Hayward either way at 7,500 has certainly flashed the upside to be, to be in play. But on this slate, I don't think we're going to be wanting to target a ton here. He and Grant are the only guys I have, and uh, I don't feel good about either of them. If we um, have, that, that is unless we have uh, uh, officially Delon right out, of course. Yeah, and there's another guy who, no, not really. I was going to say uh, Svi again, but no. That, that, I, and DraftKings especially, I don't, I don't have, really have anything for this game at all. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty tough on DraftKings. How about, uh, how about the next one? Because, and which, which is, by the way, I love that. I love when the first game is a game we can sort of go, okay, we don't need to do this. You know what I mean? Because there's always something that comes up. And I know it's going to be probably less of that because it's right after the All-Star break, knock on wood. But, uh, but it is nice when the first game we can just sort of wait, our, wait the extra, at least for me, wait the extra half hour and figure it out if there's anything else that we're wondering about. Yeah, um, I have to say that I wasn't particularly drawn to much on the, um, on, in the Brooklyn-Boston game, except for, I actually like Harden here. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I like him. I know what's his name is playing against his old team. Uh, Kyrie, but I just I just like Harden better. That's the best I can try. But with that said, I mean Kyrie's going to be, you know, maybe five percent owned. <laughs> it's possible. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like uh, I think Harden's very very strong play. He's definitely uh, well. I mean, the three there are several decent spend ups, obviously. But but I, I think I, I think I like Harden the most of all. Yeah, Harden um, probably deserves credit for playing like some of the best basketball he's ever played in his life and extremely efficient. And I mean, it, it's I think it'll be this way even when KD comes back because he can sort of fit into whatever piece you need him. It really is does feel like Harden's team, which is kind of odd. Um, I, I think the Kyrie is is a look, I, I, I did it on Christmas Day. Uh, Kyrie, for some reason, was like eight percent owned on that slate against Boston. And that was just when it was him and KD instead of him and, him and Harden. But I, uh, it was in Boston. I gave him a little bit of an extra boost for that. Uh, if there's guys who are going to try and put it on their former teams, and he's done it a number of times in the past, including against former teammates, I, I would have no problem going right back to Kyrie uh, in this kind of a spot looking for – the problem is that his price now it was easier when he's like 9K. 
because you know you get that 50 you feel good about it at nine six it's like 50 doesn't feel so great but I do think there's 60 plus upside he put 61 and a half on them earlier this season uh, Marcus Smart is going to have to guard one of these guys but he can't guard both of them so I think one of e either of them are interesting I think that Harden is is just quite frankly too cheap like he doesn't make sense as an 11k player he looks like he's in this current format it looks like he should be closer to 12K like he used to be. Not quite maybe the 13 that he was at times, but talking a guy about a guy with 70 or more, 67 or more in four of his last six, um, 73 and 80 in his last two. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's hard not to like Harden tonight. I don't think we can really do with any of the, uh, the other pieces in this game unless we hear like Jeff Green is out, who's questionable right now. But other than that, uh, the, the only other guy I want to mention on the other side, somewhere between Kemba and Jalen Brown, this is a really good matchup, even with Marcus Smart being back. I think his minutes will be limited. And I think either way, I, I, I do think Kemba and Jalen Brown have a decent shot at having a nice game here. We've seen guards and, uh, and, and wings just completely trash this team. Um, even Tatum probably is in play. It's probably too big of a slate to pay that much for him for me. But I don't mind if you want to run a Kemba Harden or Kemba Kyrie or even just a Kemba or, or Jalen uh, with one of those guys, because I do think that they're in a supreme environment. And Jalen, especially in the past in these type of environments, has played really well. That's the only thing I'd say. But um, nobody high priority. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think of um, – and by the way, we are going to continue to do process. We're not, we're not just going to be going over picks again, even though I can't full total lineups up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? Well, I'll, I, I, got, I have a plan. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I have a plan. Yeah. Um, all right. So Clint Capella um, on the other, <laughs> sorry, we, I, I'm sorry, I guess I'll start it off since I just jumped right to it. Um, I really like Clint Capella today. Um, I think this is, this is a great matchup for him to just kind of crush. And I think that honestly, like in many ways, I could argue that he's still too cheap. And you know me, Sheets, I, I, you're, you're going to have a hard time not getting me to play at least a little bit of Bogdanovich in this. We have met 20 minutes, okay? The problem is, or not the problem, he played, he played two games so far since coming back on minutes restriction. And they were right before the break. And they were back, to, it was, but he did play the back-to-back. -back, and he played 20 minutes on the second end of the back-to-back. -back. Now, going forward, you'd assume his role would be more in the 26 to 30-minute range, especially with how this team has struggled, maybe even a little bit higher. Because before when he was playing, they had DeAndre Hunter. So they're, they're actually one of their best bodies down from where he was that before. Now they do have Gallinari and all these other guys. But I do think Bogdanovich at 3.5, I mean, I think it's worth taking some shots here. I really do. And the guy who no one's going to play, I sort of like a lot of these guys. I'm sort of surprised, actually. Uh, I think that on these, these large field tournaments, maybe not even just large field but John Collins to, gets there like in a massive way too often for me not to be interested in him at 7K. Now, I know he doesn't, I know he misses a lot too, but the upside is there. I like, you know, I like to try and pick on Toronto, especially when Ben with uh, Van Vliet and uh, Siakam yeah. out, it's going to, it's going to make them, their defense even work worse. So I do, I do want some Atlanta pieces because I have some interest on the other side. Um, do you want to take uh, Toronto and then I'll I actually, I, I can, I guess I'll just finish with Toronto. Yeah, do it. Yeah, the, Stanley Johnson is going to show up as being a great value everywhere, um, especially if Terrence Davis is out. But even if not, I mean, he might play like 36 minutes if Terrence Davis is out. Um, it, it's Stanley Johnson. I don't know what else to say. Um, if, if Terrence Davis is out, it's going to be hard not to not to see him as some pretty serious value. Um, but I don't know. I don't feel like I don't feel like anybody over here is like a lock or awesome, except for I, I think Lowry's going to be really popular and it's a great matchup. And I think he probably gets somewhere near there, but it's 8600. It's not the same exact as always. If Terrence Davis does play, I actually like Terrence Davis. And in the, in the one way to, you know, the other way of fading Lowry, oh, house, do they get there? Maybe they get there through Boucher and Norman Powell, but maybe those guys don't do quite enough to make them great tournament plays. So I'm sort of iffy on the uh, Toronto guys as of right now. I think I kind of want to see what happens with Terrence Davis. All right. So I'm a little annoyed. Uh, we'll get there in a second of why I'm a little annoyed, but okay. um, I have uh, of the, of my top 10 or so values, three of them, mm -hmm. four of them are from this game. Um, and one of them, you mentioned uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich actually. Um, 
he, he's up there for me. Uh, and, you know, we've, we've, we've have seen a ceiling, uh, you know, over the last five years, or however long we've been watching him. And, you know, obviously minutes are, might be tough to come by, but you know, if he gets hot, he'll, he'll get him. you know? Um, so, so I definitely like him. I don't know whether you, um, either glossed over him or, or forgot him. That's why he didn't say, or, but like my number one value on the slate, you didn't even mention at all. So I, I would just it? say, and, and for me, it's, it's DeAndre Bembry. Um, well, yeah, all of this is Terrence Davis related to me. So I sort of have oh. him in the same, in the same in the same range, I guess. Okay. So for me, DeAndre Bembry is the, is the best play and doesn't hurt. He's going to play in Atlanta. <laughs> we used to play for her. Yep. Um, so that that's 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 where I'm at. I, I I do feel that one of um, those guys is going to is gonna is gonna get ten x. You know, right? between Bembry, um, uh, Johnson, uh, or uh, Terrence Davis. You know what I mean? Like if he plays, I think like I think one of those guys. I don't know. I don't know. What, what, I don't know if Terrence Davis is priced, but let's put it another way. I think one. Of, I think that one of them gets four gets thirty five points, fantasy points. Mm -hmm. um, what is Terrence Davis's price? Terrence Davis is uh, 4,300. Okay. But one thing about him, Terrence Davis, and, and look, we got the we got the good and the bad of him, right? In the last two games, you know, we had him with all, without all these guys and everybody played him against Detroit. Nobody played him the next night against Boston. He puts up 34. He actually can do some things. Like he's not Bembry and he's not Stanley Johnson. He can play, the, he can run an offense in the half court. He can score in the half court. He can score in transition. He can handle the ball. Those other guys, Bembry and Johnson, my issue with them is they really can't do anything. Um, they're relying on, on loose balls and, and things happening. I mean, I don't know if DeAndre Bembry has taken 10 shots in the last three years in a game, which makes it scary because he's kind of shot reliant. <laughs> like, so I, I'm much lower on Bembry unless Davis is out, but I do think that he definitely stands. I mean, both he and Stanley Johnson stand out because they're just the minutes alone at their price. The, the other guy I will just say who, um, you know, look, Lowry's going to project really well. He's going to rate to be a really, really strong play, obviously. Um, but a guy who just never seems to project for the big ceiling, but always throws it out there when these guys are out is Norman Powell. I mean, always, I mean, like, and I'm looking across the board, every place I look has like a 35 projection, pretty much somewhere between 34 and 37. And I think every single time that he's in the spot, he gets 50. I mean, like, I'm just mm -hmm. guessing that, you know, I, I, he, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe I should just play him and not worry about it. Um, uh, he, he loves to shoot. He likes to attack. And then with, with those two guys out, <laughs> you got an attacker and a shooter out of the game um, with no Van Vliet, no Siakam. Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe we're just, I would say overthinking it. I mean, I guess underthinking it because everybody's projecting him for 35. I can't, I can't see him scoring less than 35 points like ever. Um, I kind of agree with you, by the way. And they're playing it and they're playing Atlanta. I don't even care. I didn't even think of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not to mention that they're playing Atlanta. Yeah, and, and one thing about Ter about about Powell that you really t you touched on, that, look, even when when everybody was playing, when when Siakam and and uh, and Van Vliet were playing, he was getting up between thirteen and nineteen shots every game. That was with them, and yeah. without them, he, you know, he's put up twenty and seventeen in the last two games without them. Um, I, I totally, I'm on board. Um, I, I think he's actually going to have some ownership too. But, uh, but yeah, you do want these guys. I just, I guess for me, I'm just sort of, in a, I'm in a hold mode only because of the Terrence Davis. Like I got very sold that Buddy Heald was going to be out the last game before the break. I don't know if you remember. Ooh, but, I remember that. that. Game. And because I was, I mean, literally everybody, we were speculating it was a late day uh, thing. Why would you not, why would you play him before the all-star break like this? You're not playing for anything, all this stuff. And then all of a sudden he's in and it sort of threw all my lineups up in the air. Um, but this is an early game, so we'll know at least. But Terrence Davis, oh, we hope we know. Um, Terrence Davis, I do feel like dictates even more of that. I feel like Norman, you're right. Norman Powell feels like a good play either way, but I think he becomes a great play without Terrence Davis, which sounds really weird to say. So for, from a construction angle, right? If you want to play, say, Lowry and Powell or one of the two with, with, with one of the values, whether it be Stanley Johnson or Bembry or Terrence Davis or whatever, mm -hmm. like, do you, do you like, um, you like, uh, I think you, you mentioned it. You meant, did you mention John Collins? Do you like him? Do you like Trey Young? Do you like the, and you say Capella, right? That's, that's it. That, is Capella your favorite? you know, value, I mean, not value, favorite, you know, non-value from that side? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think what happens is, for, so Bain is, Baines has not been nearly as good this year defensively. I actually think Baines would be an awesome play if he was still in the 30-whatever-hundred range because 
I don't see them. I actually think that he and Boucher will play minute more minutes together than usual because first of all, they play two bigs in Atlanta and Capella is not a guy. You can just put a guy like Boucher out there. He'll get just torched. I mean, Capella will end up again with 20 plus rebounds. If that happens, it's just no question about it uh, unless he's in foul trouble, I guess. But so either way, I, you know, whatever ends up happening, I just think Capella, it's a great rebounding matchup. The pace should be good. Um, Capella should be able to, you know, catch a few of those lobs for dunks. And I just see it, it feels very much like one of those 20 and 15 and like six, six, you know, whatever, three to six blocks. Toronto has also been sloppy without Van Vliet and uh, Siakam. So there's just a lot of upside for, uh, for Capella in this matchup. And I'm really interested in him at 7,900. He's been really good to us. And one thing we love about Capella that we know is his ceiling is basically as high as these other guys who are 10K. You know, he may not get there quite as often, but he definitely has it in him. We've seen the 70 fantasy point games from him. So the, the, the Trey Young thing is, okay, we can pick. So there's a lot of things I've been looking at with Trey in this off thing, because I've got a lot of cousins that think Trey is awesome. And a lot of cousins who think Trey is the worst player ever, sort of not like, not quite, you know, that, but, but sort of like I do. Um, and one thing about Trey this year is he's really not shooting the ball that much, especially from three, which is weird. It's, it's strange to me, actually. Like, I mean, he's shooting enough of them, but you'd think he'd be in double digits, like, like, like the, like the steps, like the Lillards, those guys, he's really not taking as many of them. And for good reason, he's not a very, everybody thinks he's a great shooter. Look at the percentages. They'll, they'll sort of beg to differ. Um, some people will say it's volume, but then you look at the volume and it's actually less than these other guys. Anyway, long story short, it is a good matchup for him. I don't see myself not trying to find the extra bit to get to Harden over him. Um, just speaking of the games we've talked about so far, but I think Collins and Capella offer enough upside elsewhere and probably even Herder, who's going to be completely overlooked. Um, and, and it's probably a, a pretty safe bet for 30, 30 plus fantasy points tonight or 30 ish fantasy points, depending on how they use Bogdanovich. This is a good game to target. Maybe I can revisit this one and we can revisit this a little later when we have the uh, Davis news. Um, okay. So, so, Bam, so for Orlando, Miami, Bam, Bam is out. Um, and my first comment about Bam being out is, is, Oh my goodness. What is Vooch going to do to this team? Um, <laughs> Because the other the other guy, by the way, who who cannot who cannot guard the big the bigs is precious. Even if like they try to throw him in there, like wh whenever he's not, not a center. I, what's yeah. that? I agree, he's not a center. That's why he's like a small forward. Yeah. Um. So I I, I don't know what what Miami is going to do. Um. Probably just say you know what, make just just. The good news is there's no Fournier for, for Orlando. There's no, uh, I guess, still no Aaron Gordon, I presume. We might but have Aaron Gordon back. Oh, really? So, so what I was going to say is, you know, Miami's game plan is going to be, you know what, Butch is just going to get his, and we'll we'll stop everybody else. I mean, that, there's no Fournier. There's no shooting. You know what I mean? Like, so we'll have one guy in Terrence Ross, one guy, and one guy on uh, – on, on, you know, just dedicate it, and then we'll, we'll pack it in on Vooch and, you know, do the best we can, but Vooch is just going to get his, you know. Um, so um, Vooch at 10-4 seems on its face to be kind of kind of expensive, but I, I just can't see him not getting there. You know, like it's um, – uh, and I'll tell you from a projection perspective, I mean, there are guys that, that look like you'd rather pay for them. Um, it seems kind of silly to not find the extra 400 for Luca, for example, but – but hell, I, I don't I don't see a path for him not getting sixty fantasy points. Um, I mean, there's I guess there has to be one, but I don't know. Uh, with the other thing is that about this game is that with Bam out, I mean Butler gets all the usage he wants, I think, um, and he again is is a guy who, you know, at first glance may. You know, at this point, I, I don't even want to say he looks too expensive. I don't even think he does at this point. No, you're right. You're right. 100%. She's your you name. You know, like, yeah. like he's probably, like, if he were 9K, I would say he's probably too cheap, for example. And and with Bam out, I think I think he could – I could make a case for him being 10K here. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So so I think he's a, he's a great play. And then then the Miami value, right? So there's Olenek. And then there's – and if you want to play press, you play press. But I think Olenek – almost kind of a tough fade, right? I'm going to have to try it with him, right? He's going to, is there anybody else? To think of I, think, I think at the beginning of the day, he is the absolute stone chalk. He's got to be, right? Yeah. 
especially yeah. with the power forward eligibility. They didn't raise his price nearly enough, which I'm kind of disappointed in because. Well, the, well, the, only, thing, the only thing is, though, is that there's Dwight Howard, too. Oh, a DraftKings, no draft PC is expensive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing is, like, we've got, so, I mean, look, Olenek at really high ownership is always fadeable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to point that out. Like, what's really incredible? I mean, he was incredibly efficient the last game. But why is that though? Why do you say it high ownership? He's he's fatal. Because he's he tends to be fairly shot reliant. Yeah. Um, although with the team that currently constructed, he's actually the assist numbers have been pretty good for him. I mean, he put up seven in the last game, seven assists in the last game. He also had ten rebounds. Um, he also he there's he gets in foul trouble sometimes. He gets played off of the court, which even though we don't think Precious can guard him. We see Miami do things where they'll, they'll play Precious on him and then just do the immediate double because they have the most switchable rotating defenders of any team in the NBA, yeah. possibly when they're healthy. I mean, when Iguodala's in the game, um, actually, not, maybe not so much constructed. A lot of that has to do with Bam, too. Um, but, they, but, they, but they could do different things like that. I, I do think that he's an awesome play. I just, I'm looking for any reason to fade a guy who might be massive, like, like 40 50% shock. I don't know if he'll really end up that high, but it might be um on an 11 game slate that's pretty loaded um so i i, I agree though but Linux is what you first looking at i'm definitely going to play some precious anyway I, I understand that the price and that he's only center eligible i still believe in this kid i think there's extra minutes for him to go and i think there is some blowout risk here which i think that could you know those those 18 minutes of precious or 20 minutes of his might turn into 24 or 26 and he is going to be he is already and he's going to be for his whole career an excellent fantasy point producer per minute. I agree with everything you said about Jimmy Butler. I don't know that I'm going to end up playing him tonight, even with all that. This is not like the, uh, like they've been bad against guards in uh, Orlando, but it's just not like going to be this up pace game that I'm trying to target on this slate. Um, I love your Vooch call though. Like really what is it? Like Vooch is another one. She's, I'm guessing you have him projected under 50 fantasy points, right? Why is he projected under fantasy, 50 fantasy points? Every game outside of the game against Capella, which I can totally forgive because that's against Capella. He put a 48 in that one, by the way. It wasn't like he was terrible. But then they had Brooklyn, who beat them by like a million. So he only played 31 minutes, lost at least five or six of his minutes in that game, put up only 47 in that one. Um, in Detroit, another blowout, 41. Other than that, it's all high 50s, low 60s, some 70s. I mean, you're talking about you need like a blowout in order for Vooch not to get there at 55. Now, is he a better play than Harden? Probably not. Um, is he going to be low owned? Hell yeah. He, you're going to get like two to 3% probably on Vooch. I don't think anybody's planning on playing Vooch right now. If Aaron Gordon gets announced out, maybe it gets up to like 5%. It's just not, not the way people are going to build. So I love that call. Um, and then on the Miami side, other than Olenek, I, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to play some precious um, and probably leave the other guys out of it. But I do think there is a path for, for a big game from from Dragic or Hero um, or even none here. I just feel like with all of them, it's kind of it kind of feels guessy to try and pick which one. I don't see any one of them having a decisively better matchup than anyone else. So um, it would be Butler with Olenek or Achua and then Vooch on the other side. But I don't think I'm going to necessarily stack it. I just I, I do like Butler for what it's worth. I just don't know if he's the optimal play. Uh, on this biggest slate because even at 50 fantasy points it's not like 50 at 9.5 gets me all excited because I expect Kyrie to be there too he and Kyrie is an interesting debate between the two of them actually I think they're both pretty close okay you want to move on yeah let's do it um your Knickerbockers yeah so um Knicks against Milwaukee uh, I'm j I, j I'm j I just want to let you guys know that it wasn't this year but last year last year everybody didn't want to there was there was a game where where Giannis is playing against the Knicks. I think it was, I don't forget what was that, New York or at home or whatever. And nobody wanted to play Giannis because of the blowout risk. And yep. they were right. The Knicks blew them out by 30. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, so uh, this is actually kind of thematic for me, this first game. Um, uh, thematic in that there, there are three guys that I am, I am expecting to have um, uh, poor games, uh, poorer games. One is Giannis, one is Curry, and one is Lillard. Um, all three of them just basically the superstars from the All-Star game. Uh, I just expect them to, to just kind of just have a letdown from that. So the problem with that is that if that happens, then all the blowout risk disappears <laughs> from Milwaukee. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so, so like the worst moves Giannis does, the more fantasy points he'll end up scoring um, pretty much because uh, he'll get to, maybe he'll get like 32, 33 minutes. 
So I do, I do like him. I like Giannis. Um, uh, and on the Knicks side, I, I like the guys I always like, and uh, I'm going to be stubborn and, and recommend Alec Burks again. I'm going to, um, I'm going to recommend uh, Randall again, just because he's just so freaking expensive. He's going to be 1% owned, I think. Oh, um, yeah, I <laughs> so, so, so he's, so I might, I might take a shot at him, but, and this is, this is going to be, I would imagine the obvious play of the century um, is, is Bobby Portis, you know, like he's a, uh, I mean, if anybody, you haven't picked up on it by now yet. I mean, like he's, he, whenever there's like the tinge of blowout risk, you know what I mean? Like he's just not to mention that he played for the Knicks. Um, so uh, he's, uh, I, mean, I, I guarantee you he's going to project for shit. Right. Um, yeah. I, can't, I don't even have him like the top half of my projections. I, I can't even scroll down to find him, but um, you just got, I think you just have to have some shares in him as, as the kids like to say. Um, so, so Portis, uh, Randall at 0% and I, Giannis, Giannis is fine by me. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, me, I, I can always get behind any Bobby Portis on every single night. I just think like if you're playing Mac monster, massive amounts of lineups, almost every game, I could find a reason to say you have to have 10% Portis because look, he may not get there four games in a row, but when he does, he like nine or 10 X's and he's minimum owned. Um, or he's seven X's and he's minimum, whatever. He's just never, he's never going to be owned in, in this spot. Um, I kind of like that idea, but I don't agree with you about Giannis. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not going to say about Curry, but I think actually Curry maybe somewhat too, but Giannis. So my impression of Giannis as a basketball player, I think he's, he's more Shaq and, and Westbrook mentality. Like that's, he plays, he plays like Westbrook with, with Westbrook's mentality and he has the abilities to score in the paint like Shaq does. Uh, I think that when he gets something going and I think he's tired of it, all of it, they tried all these new things. They've been in almost intentionally bad trying to get their rotations down <laughs> okay. trying to figure out how to become a better team and all this stuff. I think they're done with it now with the way they've played. And I think it's back to Giannis time. He was an 18 to 18 to one, which you'll never see in history to, to win the MVP at the all-star break. And I think he's already 15 to one or 14 to one. He's already going back in the direction because he won the MVP at the all-star game. Um, I really think that he's going to have a monster second half this year. And, uh, I think they're still figuring some things out, but uh, it's hard for me not to, that's what the hard part about Vooch for me is I would, I would rather get up there to play Giannis. It's not the perfect matchup. Um, and I prefer Harden over him, but it's, I mean, it's really close between the two, maybe because guard is stronger. You could argue for, argue for Giannis. It is obviously not the greatest matchup, but that doesn't really matter to Giannis anyway. Anytime these guys are below like 11.5 or there's not great plays in the 8 and 9K range that I feel are obvious, I'm right. going to have interest. So definitely Giannis high on the list for me. And uh, other than that, though, I, I agree in on most slates with Burks and all that stuff. I'd take some shots there, but I just don't it's think I can play, play anybody on the Knicks in this uh, in this environment uh, today on this slate, I guess. Uh, Brooke Lopez is going to stand out from a projection standpoint. And I think it's iffy. I think that there is some, there's probably the wrong slate, probably not enough upside, but it is really cheap. So if you're desperate, Brook Lopez at 4.4 is probably not the worst idea. Um, but I sort of like the idea of going with Portis if you're not playing Giannis and, uh, and hoping for the blowout. <laughs> um, okay. You want to move on? Yeah, let's go to the next one. So this next game, I mean, uh, I mean, it rates to be one of the, one of the games, right? Um, okay. These guys that are showing up for me as, as, as good plays are, are very surprising to me. So you're going to have to kind of walk me through this. If I asked you like, like really I mean, the top two values on my board, the first one was DeAndre Bembry. The second one, I, I don't think that maybe you could get it now, but I think when we're Jake Layman? Class, what's that? Jake Layman. Yeah. 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 I mean, I didn't even know he was still playing. Um, He's actually then, played and, pretty and, well this year. Yeah. And then I saw, actually, there was some tweet or something, or there was something, someone reaching out to Jake Lehman, some, one of the DFS people or something, just begging him to do something. I, I don't know what it is. There's something going on there. And then after that, then there's, um, just so you know, I mean, there was Bembry, then Lehman, and then, then Jalen Noel. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and then... <laughs> I have a guy who, this is a little skewed because only one, it's like really one projection source likes him a lot more than the others. So I have to, I have to do a little more research in it. But for whatever reason, 
Um, I got to do a little more homework on Josh Hart because um, I'm currently getting drawn to him, but it's it's being slanted by a couple of different things. So I have to, I have to kind of look at this a little more. Those are the three guys in the game that, that immediately stand out for me are those three. And then, I mean, I, like, I don't know who's out or anything like that because then I'm seeing a little bit of the Alexander Walker, maybe. Um, I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. So, so um, what, what about like the better players? I mean, like, you, you, do we like the normal guys? Do we like, do we like cat at 10 K? I mean, I can get, I can be down with that. You know what I mean? Like, again, same concept as a, now again, the, the matchup isn't, isn't great, but you know, same, not the same logic, but you know, if I'm going to overpay for Vooch, um, there's no way that Vooch gets outscored by cat though. I don't know. So, so, so cat, cat is, is for playable for me. And then Brandon Ingram, I suppose um, on FanDuel, but also maybe on draft. I don't know what's going on with this game. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, I actually think that Cat could outscore Vooch, and, and okay. even though it's a tough matchup, it does, the pace and everything and, the, and the, the lack of defense should allow him to have a big game here. So I actually do have Cat as a guy on my list. Um, and I actually, you know, before you made the good Vooch argument, I think that I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about it exactly, but I do think Vooch is, is a really strong, I, I think Vooch is like, a, like a, a probably a better play, but they're really, I think they're pretty close. Anthony Edwards, I just want to point out the number of shots you love to see as a DFS player. There's a lot of people out there talking about how good he is. I think Anthony Edwards is awful, um, just really awful. He's, he's one of the best athletes I've ever seen. He really is incredible athletically. He'll have the best dunks of, it, of the year. But the guy hates basketball. He, I mean, well, he doesn't hate it. He said, guy, any guy who says that he's coming into the league and doing his, his rookie thing, somehow you draft a kid number one who says, I don't like basketball. I don't love basketball. I don't understand that, especially if he's not a big man. Um, anyway, Anthony Edwards though should be in play because the number of shots alone, like he just has to get anywhere near 40% and, and you might be printing money with this guy. He could put up 50 fantasy points if, if he, if he shoots 45% or 43% or whatever. Um, so I actually kind of like Anthony Edwards and I think cat frees him up. I, I think they're still trying to get his shots off even with cat in there. All of these other guys are, are iffy for me. I, I do think Jake Lehman would be the one I have the most interest in. Jalen Noel, Jaden McDaniels have both been getting minutes also. McDaniels will be the unowned one, but the minutes are trending in the right direction. Um, Vanderbilt, we know, is the, is the high producer, but we do, his minutes are never, ever there, except for one random time against Chicago recently. They played him 34 minutes, and I don't really – there's no real rhyme or reason to what they're doing with him. This team just feels totally disorganized and out of it. I'm trying to figure out how to take advantage. I don't know why Rubio's projecting quite as well as he is. I understand he had a good game right before the break, but – literally like the only time he's really been getting there lately. Um, so I, I'm, I'm mostly just looking at layman and deciding between Noel McDaniels as other value. And then Anthony Edwards would be my next pick followed by towns and Rubio, but I do like this game. So I might get a full on game stack and play two of those guys. I don't think you'd want to play necessarily. Well, you could probably play towns and, and uh, Edwards in the same lineup, but I think you'd probably rather do a Rubio with one of those guys potentially. Um, well, talk to me about Rubio because Rubio is 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 popping as an incredible value. Yeah, it's a little over the top. I think it's because the backup point guard is out. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, got the, the Jaden. The Jaden and Jalen's on this team, and uh, why can't I think of his name right now? I gotta gotta get it here. I'll do it right now. It's uh, Jordan McLaughlin. Jaden, Jordan, and Jalen. It's just too many. And then Jake Layman. It's just there's a lot of things going on with this, these names that are confusing. I'm, on Minnesota. Um, so uh, yeah, him being out is gonna, is gonna make Rubio pop, but I'm not so sure that they don't just find other minutes for Edwards. <laughs> Actually, I mean, who else can play point guard on their team? Like they really don't have another, they have a ton of bodies. They just don't have anyone else who's actually a point guard. So that, I guess you make Jalen Noel that guy. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> That's why he's popping. Uh, but Jalen Noel might be the better play because you just get this, the huge discount. So somewhere between those two guys, I think I still prefer Layman if I'm going to play Rubio. But if I'm going to play, if I'm not going to play Rubio, maybe Noel is just the better value. Um, unfortunately, if Layman, does, if Layman doesn't start, would you play him? Uh, I don't think he would start. He started the last game. Did he start the last game? Yeah. Hmm. That's what I was just poking around to see where these. Did he start? So he started, and who did they sit the last game? Vanderbilt. Uh, no. Uh, 
this Ooh. was the, this was the starting lineup: it was Cat, Rubio, Edwards, Lehman, and Vanderbilt. Oh, okay. McDaniel's sat. If that means anything. That's a really good. So yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, I would not play them. And that, on that basis, I don't. I don't think I would play Lehman um, unless he was starting. Well, I consider him, but I, I certainly oh, wouldn't on. be. I'm going back. So in, in the in the other game where he played a bunch of minutes, came off the uh, came off the bench. But what they did was they they played him the last 16 minutes of the game. Um, right. Because he was playing but, well. And so but well. I will say that well, well, both games they got blown out. And they got blown out in both of them. Yeah. Yeah, Which so, may, may very well happen again tonight, by the way. So that's <laughs> that's a real possibility. So they um, tinkered with the lineup to, and they gave Layman, you know, the run, and they lost by twenty five both games. I, I my my point is, I just would not get too. Mm-hmm. I, would, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you, if remember the coach doesn't really care that he the guy increases fantasy points. You know what I mean? Like, oh, of course, the coach says this is what I did, and we lost both games by thirty. He right. might go right back to the bench. You know, like. Yeah, yeah, it's it's possible. It, that's very true. And um, the only thing is, I would say this this game does feel like that they uh, they, they may end up getting blown out again. Um, I really uh, like so if you're playing if you're playing other pieces of this game, I think you want to play you want less Noel and less Layman. But if you do think that the game has a chance to even slightly kind of blow out, and those guys are going to have an opportunity on the second units, uh, I think you want to try and take shots on both those guys along with Jaden McDaniel's, who will get a ton of minutes in, in blowouts as well. Um, but especially Jalen Noel and Lehman. Um, on the other side, who are you like? Everybody should have a good game here, but at their prices, the guy who I'm honestly the most interested in is um, people will probably be surprised that Lonzo should, like is a is a significantly better shooter than Trey is, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the, or like statistically anyway. Um, I, I like I like Lonzo. And I like what they've been doing with Bledsoe lately in terms of sort of showing him off and playing him a bunch of minutes. I know he had uh, the last game, he didn't play much in the, on the back-to-back, but in general, he's been, he's been getting more run. The guy though I would be leaning towards is, uh, is Lonzo here. And I think there's still room for Zion, but I just don't think I'd go there. And you mentioned the Josh Hart thing. I, I think that it's funny because he played all the minutes when they were missing, um, God, who was out that game? Uh, oh, Zion was. Um, but he also plays those minutes sometimes anyway. And he would tech like theoretically would eat into Bledsoe's minutes. I don't know where I stand on him right now. Um, He hasn't been incredibly productive in the last little bit, but this is a great matchup and it does seem like it suits his style. So I have mild interest in Josh Hart, but mostly it's going to be Lonzo for me on this side. And I think it's a really good matchup for him. Yeah. um, I got him at 30 minutes. Lonzo? No, uh, Hart. Yeah, that sounds. I mean, I think that sounds like about about what it could be. Like, I mean, but it might be. It'll it'll be somewhere between twenty two and thirty six. Like, it's okay. it's it's a it's pretty. It wavers with him a little bit, but I do think he'll play minutes. I just if he plays minutes with Bledsoe, Ingram, Lonzo, and Zion, he's not going to do that much. If he plays minutes with Stephen Adams, uh, one of those guys, you know, one or two of those other guys and then either Alexander Walker or Kira Lewis, then he's going to put up numbers. Um, are we I'd maybe like, missing maybe? I'd like, to, I'd, like to, I'd like to run into one of those 20, those 20 rebound games again. Yeah, seriously. That's pretty amazing. Um, I do think that there is an argument to play some Steven Adams here. I know it sounds really gross. 5,100 should play solid minutes against Cat. I don't see Jackson Hayes as having any way of guarding Cat. So I think Adams might have some upside in his minutes. Um, but it's, I don't feel excited about any of this stuff. Like, um, for a game that I really want to target, I just don't see people like that. They, they did a good job with the crisis, I guess is the best way to put it. I really do like Lonzo, though. I want to stress that. I think that he is a really strong play. And he's been terrible lately. And I don't think people are going to go back to him, but he's, he's just missed some shots in the last few games. It's a great matchup for him. All right. So the, 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 the team formerly known as the Philadelphia 76ers against Chicago. Uh, so no Embiid, no Simmons, right? <sighs> it just on the most recent update, whatever reason, I have a new top value. And this, boy, we're close to lock. We're only six and a half hours from lock. So better make sure to lock him in. Um, and that's, Furkan Korkmaz, 
beats me. Um, uh, but Tobias Harris is going to be the more obvious play, I would imagine, on both sites. Um, I think more so on FanDuel, but even still um, on DraftKings. And then also, I imagine on um, FanDuel, Shake Milton's still 4K, right? So not, not Shake Milton, Seth Curry, but also Shake Milton, I imagine. Yeah. And Dwight Howard is still probably 4K or below, probably 3,800, right, on FanDuel? Mm-hmm. 5,300 even on DraftKings, not the worst. Thing. Is Dwight Howard going to end up being a decent pivot off of Linux after all that or no? Yeah, but I think he's going to be popular too. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, Seth Curry over here too. So Milton, Curry, Cork, Maz. I mean, I think I think you really are supposed to do this, right? You're supposed to play a bunch of these guys and and run it back with Levine. You no, know? uh, that would be my 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 obvious way of looking at it. And of course, you know, Levine doesn't project all that that great. But you know what? I mean, there's. Do you really think that they 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 these projections assume that the two best defenders were out on Philly? You know, I I don't know. So it feels maybe, a little low. I agree. I kind of agree that that feels a little bit like they should be a little higher. I mean, this is exact. I mean, Levine gets to the rims and Philly's rim protection is gone, right? And Simmons Simmons can test out his threes, and and he's go. I don't know. It seems like Levine can have a freaking. A, a really, really good game here at, at, a, at a ridiculous price, but whatever. I mean, if you get all these Philly guys home, you know, and then, then you get, and then you get the, uh, it's weird. Now I'm worried about Philly keeping it close. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. This, this, this seems like kind of a classic DFS situation, right? You, you play Levine, even though his price kind of sucks with all the value from Philly and just hope it just, just goes. No. Yeah, I think it's okay. Um, the Levine part. I, oh, that's I, so exciting. Right. I mean, no, no, but I like it though. I mean, I, I love Levine in general, you know that. And I think that, he, you know, it's it's just comparing him with the other guys in his price range, the Butlers and all those guys, whatnot. That's like, true. it's not like, it's not like they're, and, and Markkinen is supposed to be back for what it's worth tonight. So um, that, that's just, what's be, his it's, price? You under 5K somehow? 6,400. He's not, he's not cheap. And he's, he's probably going to be limited. Um, I, the, look, Korkmaz should should get the minutes. He's cheap. Um, I he's think that I just will say the same thing. Yeah, you don't. You need to rely on him getting there other ways. Uh, Seth Curry similarly, but I do think there's more shots to go around for Seth Curry. So I would, you know, feel a little more comfortable. I know it's 5200 is a different price thing, but I do think Seth Curry is a is a very reasonable play um, at 52. Uh, Tobias is going to be the probably the chalkiest of the bunch and. For me, it's not even close, but right now I have Shake Milton as astronomically, like almost how do you not play him on both sides? Um, I think you could be looking at 40 plus easily and it's a great matchup. The usage has got to flow through someone. Uh, he's a creative good guard who the Bulls struggle with. Um, they're going to need scoring. It, unless they're going to play Maxi a bunch of minutes, that's the way he doesn't get there. I really feel like it's going to be hard. Like, are they really going to run a Curry, Korkmaz, Harris, Howard? Why? With it, without Milton in the starting lineup, like get a guy who can actually create. Like they don't have any creators, including Tobias Harris, who can create for himself, but not for his teammates. And I don't know. Personally, I, I don't see how Shake Milton doesn't get there without Maxi or one of the other, you know, guard, guards doing something. I don't really know how that's going to work because Curry's not a creator. Korkmaz is not really a creator. Um, so I really like Shake. Uh, I do also like the, the other guys I mentioned, um, but I, I think, and I think I would, you know, I'll end up with more Curry probably than Korkmaz. I want to make sure Korkmaz is in the starting lineup before I do anything. And then I, one thing I keep in mind with Dwight Howard, you don't need to necessarily play huge against the Bulls, even though I like Wendell Carter in general. So it could easily turn into Dwight Howard could turn into Tony Bradley and more likely, I think Mike Scott might get a ton of run here um, potentially. So they, they have bigs. They, I'm looking for creators because they don't have any creators without Sim, without Simmons and Embiid. So Mike Scott is not the most exciting guy, but he can at least he'll at least shoot and score. And I mean, the, the two creators on this team are Maxi and, and Shake. And I'm a little surprised that no one's projecting Maxi for any minutes today. I could see Maxi getting 20 plus minutes, and at 3,300, he would obviously be firmly in play if he does. 
So okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. So this this what this is what I'm kind of mad at right now. So I don't know whether it's the monkey knife fight or the prize picks or the what was the other new one the the house advantage or whatever it is. I don't know which of these I actually just says okay this is a projection. You have to get more or less than this projection. You know what I mean? Like a fantasy points projection. But I will say this, that, that if all these sites are going to put these medium projections up, I'll tell you what I'll do. If anybody's out there listening to any of the big sites, and you guys all know who you are, who I follow. If you want to tell me that, so I see a medium projection across the industry of Zach Levine against Philadelphia with no Embiid and no Simmons at 44 fantasy points. Okay. Yeah. So and then if you let's let's have some fun. You want to add the 35 points that Norman Powell's going to get apparently against Atlanta with no other guys in Toronto in. So you add those two together and you get 79. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bump the combination of the two of them to 80. I'll give you six to five odds, and I'll be more than happy to take your action. If you, agree if you want you. if you want to put a medium projection out there like that, you got you can't, I mean that's ridiculous. I, mean, I agree I don't know. with you. That's what I don't know what to tell you. I totally um, agree with you, actually. Um, so I, the only thing that was worried me is that is the market and being back a little bit. For sure. The but I mean, we're not talking like, about, you know, whether yeah, it gets healing or whatever. I'm just, but just how do you project that? I mean, given, given the matchup and given the whatever, you know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, I'm with you. I actually think it, may, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Um, I agree more about Powell, but I do agree about Levine too. Like, I, I think that that's a good point. And um, Otto Porter is also p- potentially projected to play, but he might get bought out, I'm hearing. So that, oh, that's that right? screw with the projections a little bit. So he, they, the projections will probably be better for Levine by the, you know, two hours from now. And that's not even to say that, that Levine's a good value because he's still, he's still a fortune. You know what I mean? I'm just saying the 44 is a little bit egregious. What can I tell you? I, I agreed, 100%. Egregious. Um, all right. Egregious and, and, the game. But, but they're all but they're all like that. Like look at Vooch too. You know what I mean? Like I actually don't think Vooch is as crazy mate. Well, well yeah, yeah, it is. I'm sorry. It's not, if it's under 50, it's crazy. And it's that makes it crazy. Yeah. Sorry, it is it is crazy. All right. So Dallas OKC. Yep. Um back to back for Dal for Dallas means we likely don't get Chris stops. Uh, that sucks. I wanted to play him. Man, how about last night though? I mean, okay. Oh, did I, t- I didn't even tell you what happened last night, Sheets. So I get I finished 18th in the big one on Fanduel with my one what? lineup, and I finished 18th with Trey Lyles in my lineup, with two okay. fantasy points. They did not play Trey Lyles in the first half for the first time after they announced Aldridge out, out for good, you know, and they and they don't play Trey Lyles at all. Oddly, Trey Lyles, who was like unowned in the smaller stuff on Fanduel, was like 24% in the big buy-in, but I ended up I ended up uh, 18th with uh, you know what I did. I played the 2% owned starter. The only way you'd get a 2% owned starter on a two game slate, Garrison Matthews, who got into foul trouble early, but ended up with 15 fantasy points, which was perfect because it allowed me to differentiate my lineup and get all the guys in. Um, so it was kind of a, it was kind of would have been fun sweat uh, had Popovich remembered that Trey Lyles was in the, on the team in the first half. Um, I, I would like to show you how well I did on DraftKings. Zero, 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 zero. Zero. That was my DraftKings too. I'm talking about zero, 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 zero. Hey, there's one where I cashed for fifteen dollars. That's how. That's, that's, that's one more than I cashed for on DraftKings, but I only had a few lineups. But, <laughs> that's, that's how I did. But but I'm telling you right now, on FanDuel. Remember, I was saying there's ways you can just find that one oh, way to get. Totally oh, and me and FanDuel, I was a real superstar because I figured out a way to play seven lineups and fade Valanciunas in all seven of them. Oh my God! That that is that that's that's how smart I was last night. I was flirting with it, and then I uh, <laughs> ended up doing it. Thank goodness. Um, no problem. I, I thought I was getting really. I mean, I got real creative with. The, I mean, look to get a two percent owned guy in the starting lineup, and right away, literally in the first minute, two two threes he hits in a block, and I'm like, oh, I'm off and running. It's all mine. 